All I really wanted was my own bike gang. It seemed like it should be a pretty easy task. I just recruit a few friends, we grab some denim jackets and patches, and we'd be all set. See, when I was in college, I started riding my bicycle again. I rode my bike so I could sleep in later and save my scarce money on gas and parking, and because it was just free and easy. And when I returned to my hometown of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, I continued to ride. At that time, there were very few other people riding bikes, and almost none of them were my friends. There was the occasional guy that would zip through town on his way to the fantastic road biking just outside the city. And there were those guys that you could tell for biking was just a last resort. But there are very few people in between. I'm naturally a social person, and I just wanted to recruit some friends to join me on rides around town, rides to the park, rides to the bar. So I set out to recruit a few friends, and I solicited the help of my good buddies, logic and reason. So I went to my friends, and I said things like this. I said, hey, let's ride to the bar. It's like always getting the first round for free. Or hey, let's ride to the market downtown. It'll be cheaper and quicker. We're guaranteed to have the best parking space. Or said, hey, you should think about riding to work. It'll make you stronger and healthier. Or hey, let's not drive. We can ride. Let's give our poor planet a break. And with all this, I thought logic and reason would score a re resounding victory. And soon enough, my little bike gang would be roaming all over town. But in the end, almost none of my friends would join me. So rather than get frustrated, I decided to dig a little deeper and do some more research. Many of my friends I had talked to had showed some interest in riding, but they were concerned about the safety of our streets. They'd ride at the beach, or they had ridden in cities like Amsterdam or Portland. But they weren't going to ride here. Our current infrastructure just didn't support it. So I figured, hey, there must be some grown-ups working on this. So I started to poke around the local government and bike advocacy groups. I once again tried the same tactic as I did with my friends. I said, hey, we should support bikes. There's a large population of people here with limited access to transportation. Providing a greater bike network would allow them to get to work, get to play, and get to local businesses. Hey, we should support bikes. Like most places in America, we have a large and growing issue with obesity. Supporting active transportation could, provide, could make a huge difference. Or hey, we should support bikes. Supporting bikes lessens the need for downtown parking, reduces congestion, attracts young talent and new businesses, and the projects are actually relatively cheap. And at the time, the general reaction can be summed up with, no one rides bikes here, kid. This isn't Portland. Go away. So here I was, stuck without a bike gang because of a classic chicken and egg problem. People weren't riding bikes because we didn't have the infrastructure. We didn't have the infrastructure because people weren't riding bikes. It seemed like an intractable problem, but I was able to see a way forward. We needed to build culture. We needed to break down barriers. We needed to take away excuses. We needed to build community. I had read about the community bike shop model, and as I started to dig into it, I realized this was the best way to go. It's going to be the easiest, most sustainable, and I think could provide the biggest impact. It was definitely best for someone that was 26 years old with no money and no experience. I envisioned a community hub, a place where we could provide access to functional, utilitarian bikes for everyone a place where we could teach basic bike mechanics to kids and adults, and a place where we could provide access to tools for everyone, a place where we could teach people how to work on their bikes, kids and adults, a place where we could organize social rides and rally people to petition the local government, a place where people could come together. A little more than two years ago, the Common Wheel was born. And in that time, thanks to the incredible efforts and support of so many people, that vision of a bike shop as a community hub has been completely realized. It turns out, if you build it, they do come. And they've come from places I could never dream of. This is Javi. He spends most days crisscrossing town on his bike, going just about as slow as humanly possible, but always getting to where he needs to go, and with his trademark dolls always in tow. Now, Javi stops at our shop on most days, and he helps out by cleaning bikes, unloading customers' cars, helping with minor fixes, and making us laugh with his signature catchphrases. This is Velarmino. Velarmino ran his own bike shop in Cuba for 20 years. He came to Lancaster as a refugee and volunteered regularly with us while waiting to be eligible for work. He amazed us with his inventive mechanical skills and hard work ethic, and these were so impressive that we were able to help him get a full-time job with a local construction company. While with us, he helped many fellow Cubans get on bikes and was the genesis for our refugee bike program. This is Damasen. 
Damasen has really become our poster child. In less than two months removed from a Rwandan refugee camp, he showed up to our very first Ernabite class, armed only with his 1,000 kilowatt smile and some natural mechanical skills. And over the last two years, we have seen him blossom into a fun-loving teenager while building his skills by fixing bikes for his friends, family, and others in need. And he's now become a part-time employee and has gotten to enjoy many new experiences via bike. While each of these individual stories are incredible, it's not just those that work in the shop that are the ones positively affected. The true magic comes in the collective. When people enter the shop or join us on one of our slow social rides, all differences in race, ethnicity, class, gender, and sexual orientation begin to dissolve. Joy, playfulness, and curiosity begin to seep in. The network effect sets in, and they bring their friends to the next ride. And gradually, more and more people are hitting the streets and discovering the benefits for themselves. Last year, I led one of these slow rides and wanted to be very intentional about taking the group through certain neighborhoods. And after a great ride with tons of smiles and waves from people out on their porches and stoops, three white, middle-aged ladies that were on the ride approached me. They were smiling from ear to ear. And they explained that they're from an affluent suburb and they had never been through those neighborhoods. They absolutely had a blast that night and loved seeing all of the life that was there. Now that is how you start to break down barriers. Often I'll be introduced by someone or meet someone for the first time and hear something along these lines. Say, hey, this is Chris, he's a cyclist. Or, hey, this is Chris, he's a bicycle advocate. Or just, hey, I know you, you're the bike guy. And every time I hear these things, I tend to cringe a bit inside. Because for me, it's not really about the bike, it's about the people. Now don't get me wrong, I think bikes are insanely versatile, efficient, abundant, almost magical pieces of machinery that also happen to be boatloads of fun. But for me, again, it's not about the bike, it's about what we can do through the power of bikes. We can teach young people STEM skills and problem solving in a practical and tangible hands-on way. And we can show them all the places they can go and how far they can explore on a machine that they can fix and maintain and power themselves. We can empower people to get to wherever they need to go in order to thrive, and we can do this in an efficient and affordable way, allowing them to reach more opportunities and make their limited dollars go further. We can really bring people together and build community. Biking breaks down social exclusion. You can see your neighbors and fellow citizens. You can stop and chat to friends and acquaintances. You can slow down enough to really see your city, to take in the good as well as the bad, and to realize that you can make a difference. Embracing bikes won't solve all of the world's problems, but in the meantime, my new bike gang and I will be working to solve many of them. <laughs>